You know, there was a time in North America where, you know, people would look at something like a, a Honda or a Toyota and they would say that, you know, these, these are ugly little cars. These are ugly little cars that, yeah, they're fuel efficient and mechanically they're actually quite reliable. But, you know, in general, it's nothing that you would really want. You want something big and you want something that, you know, has all these accoutrements attached to it. But at the end of the day, you know, those Japanese cars, it took some external world events and some, um, you know, interruptions to fuel supply to really kind of uh, drive the point home. But after that had happened, it it pretty much kind of changed people's minds and it was a slow evolution, but they eventually kind of came around and Japanese cars really took off in North America. I feel that unintentionally, Drake has been kind of set up that way. That a lot of people, their initial reactions to Drake ships when they look at them compared to Origin, or they look at them compared to Aegis or Anvil, they're like, oh, these ships, I don't, I, you know, I don't like them and there's asymmetry to them and they're kind of ugly. But like the thing of it is, is that you can't argue with the utility of them, right? Like there's, there's a basic utilitarian value to these ships that, you know, you just, you don't get that good mix anywhere else. Now there are some kind of standouts like here at the back of the screen, you see the Buccaneer and the Herald. And you might say, oh, those ships, not exactly so much. The Buccaneer is famous for being flimsy and the Herald is famous for being able to do, not do anything in the game for quite a long time. But if you really think about it, let's say data running were to be brought into the game right now. Data running and hacking were the next big priority and CIG was like, you know, but before the end of 2021, you know, data running and hacking are gonna be huge. Um, in equivalent terms, you would see like the Herald, I would say probably in data running, be the equivalent of a cargo hauler or, or being the equivalent cargo hauler of say like a Drake Cutlass and still have the ability to bring a bed, a bathroom, or you know, at least a toilet and a shower and food equipment, things like that. And you would see that kind of stock rise. And when you look at the Drake lineup of ships that are yet to come, I just remember pausing because these guys taking the selfie, it was like, just like, at first I was just like, that's weird. And I was like, oh no, but I guess that does kind of make sense. <laughs> the pose doesn't exactly make sense, but, uh, you know, yeah, I guess that does make sense. But like the, the truth of it is, is in a weird way, getting back on topic is that, um, you know, Drake is oddly set up for the future and the ships that they're bringing out to kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of like they're making all the right moves at a time when people will look at them and say like, I'm not sure, really sure that's a good idea. Or I'm not really sure that really fits their lineup or fits their, you know, their corporate ethos, whatever people might say. But when you think, when you look into the future of star citizen, like this is a manufacturer that is just set up for every every phase of that development that they have an answer to your biggest problems your biggest needs your biggest questions going into the future when data running shows up you've got the ship when when salvaging shows up and we all know how immensely popular the prospector was well the vultures there too right and so you're kind of like oh wow you know like oh shit Drake really is set up to, uh, you know, kind of take on the world and, you know, open up a lot of really interesting fields. Now, with the arrival of the Hercules, you can easily say that the Caterpillar is no longer the king of, you know, cargo, but it's still a really good cargo ship. And there's probably more than a few people out there who will turn their Caterpillars into Hercules as, you know, as the game as as the hercules becomes available and as the game develops there's obviously going to be a lot of people who do that but you're probably still going to see a fair amount of caterpillars out there because there's probably a lot of people who kind of have fallen in love with that ship over time 
And that's, you know, in a weird way, like Drake seems to have planted its flag in all the critical areas, whereas so many other manufacturers have been so fi um, so focused on military contracts that they've missed obvious opportunities. And even going into the more distant future, you know, as players start to confront, you know, the need of having a mobile base out there in the universe, well... In a weird way, unless you unless you own an Idris, the only other game in town, you know, is the Kraken. And in fact, <clears throat> if you're not talking about direct combat capability in which the Idris is, you know, I would say the undisputed king. Um, the truth of it is, is that the Kraken, in terms of logistics, is probably better set up than the Idris. So... It's, it's this weird situation where Drake seems to be, you know, th this manufacturer that's ostracized, that's pushed aside in the lore, you know, you know the f famous line from so many brochures, you know, this is, you know, what so-and-so did for, a, for the contract. And, you know, the military puts out a contract for a heavy fighter and all the, you know, manufacturers bid and the Drake uh, contract or the Drake submission is, you know, dismissed out of hand, you know, that that funny line that CIG loved to put in so many of the early brochures but like the truth of it is is that oddly enough Drake is just very agile in seeing what the market needs you know lore wise and being able to show up with something that works in that field you know <laughs> I mean we keep talking about how this is you know the the pirate ship manufacturer yet the only real police cruiser that we have in the game is also manufactured by them as well. You know, they're kind of supplying both sides of the fence, which I personally think is absolutely hilarious, you know. Now, some people might look at the Drake event and say, you know, oh, I wish they, they had done a new Drake ship. And other people say, but yeah, but what would Drake show up with? What would, you know, Drake bring to the table? What would you realistically expect to see from Drake and I feel that there really are two ships that we are probably going to see from Drake in the next couple of years the first ship is going to be a Vanguard equivalent I believe that we are going to see a Drake heavy fighter and I, I think we're probably going to see it sooner rather than later with the, you know, probably around the time of the, the addition of Pyro. We're probably going to see a Drake heavy fighter. It, it's, you know, Drake is not a manufacturer that quote unquote stays in their lane in the way that, you know, to a certain degree, Aegis does or Anvil they branch out and they touch on so many different fields and so many different, uh, you know, disciplines that I really feel that you are going to see a Drake heavy fighter. And Drake is going to step into that and it is going to be a Vanguard equivalent. Whereas it is probably going to shed some of that resiliency for more firepower. So if you're a Vanguard owner and you're kind of a little concerned as I am, when you look at the other heavy fighters and you see the small modules and the small fuel tanks and you're like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that within a couple of years, you're going to be able to CCU that or, you know, jockey things around. Um, if you have enough uh, buyback tokens and whatnot to kind of backwards CCU your way into, you know, something like probably like the Drake Griffin or you know something along those lines there's going to be a Drake heavy fighter I would almost guarantee it the other side of things is I think that you're going to see something else in the capital combat sphere though not specifically geared towards combat you're probably going to see something along the lines of a hammerhead or a Perseus where it's, you know, it's long range, deep space exploration ship. But, 
you're gonna look at the loadout and you're gonna say, um, yeah, quote unquote exploration, <laughs> you know? Okay, you know, the armament is gonna make it obvious. It's not gonna be the toughest ship, but it is going to be a very hard hitting ship. In a weird way, one of the greatest strengths that this ship is going to possess, because, you know, obviously it's going to be set up as, as a bit of a glass cannon. One of the greatest strengths that, and it's something that is, you know, it, it spans the entire Drake line, is the fact that because no one was worried about color swatches or, you know, wood paneling on the walls or all these other little ultimately useless accoutrements in the Star Citizen universe, is that because developers weren't thinking about that, they were just building things in a way that just logically made sense and they didn't have to worry about, where am I gonna put the pool table? Where am I gonna put the hot tub? You know, what what you know, what's the color pattern that I'm going for in my lunchroom? You know, none of that is really thought of, you know, and instead all that, you know, brain time instead goes into, okay, what makes sense to make this room flow? And that is kind of a hallmark of Drake because it you know, because in universe, it's a no frills manufacturer. But for us, that actually works out as, you know, from a real world point of view, because game developers aren't wasting all this time picking color swatches and wood paneling and tiles and, you know, all this other BS. So in that, it's there's going to be a certain strength to that to that offering, which is going to make it a contender. So that's yeah. In, in a nutshell, what I expect over the next few years from Drake is we're probably going to see a heavy fighter that uh, has the range and the medium modules of a Vanguard that sacrifices some of the resiliency for hitting power and a capital exploration ship that is uniquely well armed, but, you know, compared to the Aegis or Anvil equivalent, not as resilient, but probably a lot more livable. You know, as long as you're willing to do without, you know, the air hockey table and, you know, the fine wood paneled interiors. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.